Alistar pays less mana for his mayhem. Lucian's pursuit is more relentless, and we're putting jungle creeps on the clock. Welcome to Patch 412. Hey guys, Miss Pudding here to walk you through the changes we are making in Patch 412. We'll kick things off with a TLDR before getting to our panel to cover a few topics in depth. Today's topics are the new jungle timers, Lucian and Alistar. To skip ahead, check out the video bookmarks. Okay, let's get into it. Essence Reaver and Bloodthirster got some changes to cement one as an offensive mana restoring item and the other as a defensive life stealing bloodthirsty item. Next up, Cassidy's been running rampant with his crazy mobility and control. Rather than hitting his iconic Riftwalk, we're tweaking a few other things to reduce Cass's late game power so he doesn't just continuously punch you in the face. Similarly, Lucian's getting some changes to highlight his strengths while giving him real weaknesses. He'll be dashing a lot more often, but in exchange, he'll have to get a little closer to deal damage and stay effective. Alistar now has lower mana costs and an early buff to his ult, but junglers take note his passive no longer deals double damage to monsters. This patch also comes with jungle timers. In the scoreboard, you'll find red, blue, dragon, and baron timers that'll automatically update if your team has vision of a camp when it's killed. Finally, we've got a few more champion tweaks. Ari's Q costs less mana and scales slightly better than before. Kha'Zix is getting a buff to his Q, and Ezreal can now buff himself with Essence Flux, but only if he can get in front of it while it's midair. Okay, so that's the gist of patch 412. Uh, to talk about these updates, I'm joined by Gnome from Game Clarity Team, Static from Live Gameplay, and Snoopy from Evil Geniuses. Hey guys, thanks for coming out. Uh, so, <laughs> sorry, you all nodded in, <laughs> in unison. What is this? We're just acknowledging <laughs> All three of you at the exact same time. Do <laughs> yes, the exactly. same thing. Uh, so I'd like to start a discussion with the addition of jungle timers that are visible in the scoreboard now. Why did we add those in the first place? Yeah, so we knew this was going to be a really controversial feature when we started working on it. And it's controversial not only to players, but also internally, because we've literally <laughs> been debating this feature for years, right? Yeah, I, I feel like we talked about this three years ago. <laughs> yeah. We don't read it for a while. Yeah. And, and you know, Really, when it comes down to it, and we sat down and thought about what our design values are, uh, we came up with a list. And one of those uh, values was gameplay clarity. And sort of the gist of gameplay cl clarity is that we want players to fight other players and not the game. And when we look at how players have been utilizing jungle timers, that is, you know, the timers we pre present currently, which are, you know, minimap icons, uh, the chat logs, uh, they're actually resorting to Notepad. Uh, mobile applications and third-party programs to really make the best use of the jungle and play their best. Mm. And when we look at this situation, it's not really a situation we want because we want the game itself to provide all of the tools necessary to play at the best competitive levels. And the problem with that is like every single player, maybe mm. not necessarily diamond or challenger players or competitive players, but most players are going to want the game to be simpler. So where do you stop with making the game simpler for those players to digest? I think it's also a little unfair to just say we're you know, just making it simpler. Like The goal mm -hmm. behind it is, is a bit more than that. We're trying to make sure that we have players focusing on the skills that you know, they enjoy doing exactly. and that we, we feel like show what a, a League of Legends player really is. You know, dodging skill shots, aiming skill right. shots. We want to stay away from rote sort of like mm -hmm. bookkeeping behaviors. Right, so like instead of focusing on when when is Dragon going to spawn, when should I check the chat log and actually just thinking where should I be at the right time, is my team ready to fight this? <laughs> if you apply that train of thought at the same time, like the enemy's marksman's carry like his flash is down, his summoners are down. Mm -hmm. So I want to know that. Why should I have to bookkeep that and like constantly log that his flash is down or his flash is up? Yeah, it comes down to those things are a point of interaction between player and player, right? Mm -hmm. uh, the jungle itself is a very static element. Like when the when Baron responds, it's always going to be seven minutes, and there's no variability there, right? You know it's going to respawn. Whereas when a champion flashes or a champion uses an item, uh, there's no guarantee of something that's going to happen when that cooldown comes back up, right? Mm -hmm. So would we make the decision to put red and blue buff on mm -hmm. the jungle timers as well? Uh, where did we draw the line? Like, why didn't we include things like inhibitor timers or even the rest of the jungle camps? Yeah, well, I think, you know, a good point there is that inhibitor timers are one of the things that we could consider doing in the future. I'm actually, um, I'm more in favor of that. I'm more in favor of um, inhibitor timers than necessarily jungle timers. I've grown to kind of accept the jungle timer change, mm -hmm. um, just with the kind of small changes that were made about the idea. 
Um, but entanglement timers, I think, are more primary than jungle timers, for example. Uh, right. that, that's the or, big thing for me, honestly, yeah. which is like every time we make a change to the game, we're always thinking about what, what is the actual result on the players? Mm -hmm. What's going to happen when we do it? And in this case, you know, when we think about uh, jungle timers specifically, giving people act easier access to that information means people are going to be able to show up to buffs, show up to dragon, show up to baron, and create a lot of interesting moments in the game where they can interact and, you know, like make big plays. Um, and so that, that's something that, you know, as designers really excites us. What's, what's going to tell them? Like, now they have to be told to press tab and then look at the timers. It being in tab, right, anytime you do check your score, you do get to see, hey, you know, when is Baron up? When is Dragon going to be up? And that's sort of our way of, uh, of, of almost hiding it, but, but also keeping it very accessible. Like, when you do check your score, you get that little glimpse of information. And I, from my point of view, it's not that much different from checking a chat log. But now the onus is on all of the players to understand, like when. I don't it's understand the, the point we make about we want to hide it, like slightly. I don't understand that because if we're want to be more transparent and like just give them this information that's already there, why would we slightly disguise it? That's a really good question. It's not that we necessarily want to disguise it, right. but it's also like you know, hey, this is a big chunk of the UI. We don't want to always keep it mm -hmm. up. Because when we do keep it up, right, it becomes a prescriptive element. You see a big countdown at the top of the screen, and you kind of understand, oh my gosh countdown to zero, I'd better be there. And that's really not what we want to get to. What we do want to get to is like, hey, this is their, this optional information that you can make use of to make your own decisions. Yeah. So um, let's go ahead and move on to Lucian. Uh, he's been consistently strong in competitive play and I mean, especially yeah. in solo queue, I think. <laughs> um, what, what is it about his kit that's so difficult to balance? I mean, he, he's just a super well-rounded kit. He's a, he's a kit that has uh, a lot of strengths, and but not necessarily any weaknesses. You know, he's got great damage. He's got great safety through mobility, um, and when you put that all together, you get a champion that can kind of uh, react to any situation and not necessarily care, you know, about what the enemy is doing or what he needs to do this game. It's just I'm Lucian, and you know, I have a great chance to win. I'm, I'm Lucian. Yeah, he synergized really well with like win. any like aggro support, for example. He just mm -hmm. synergized so well with because those early levels, he could punish you. Like really, really hard because he could choose to go in, he could choose to go backwards. Um, he could also push the wave like relatively fast compared to other ADs. So that early phase of the, the lane where it can be decided on whether you get level two first or whether you get level three first, he was very potent in that aspect. Mm -hmm. So in giving him a weakness, we reduced his attack range, his Q cast range. Attack range is one of the most sensitive things that affects a marksman power. Why do we decide to make that his weakness? Um, it comes down to uh, what do we perceive the core of, of Lucian to be? Um, because we're at a point where we have 100 plus champions and we need to make sure they're all different. You know, they feel different. They provide something different to the game. Uh, strategically, I think specifically is really important for like competitive. Um, and so when it came down to it, he, he's got great damage. He's got great mobility. Um, we had to find a way to make sure he had a weakness. He had something that people could exploit. Exactly. Um, and so how do we, how do we uh, increase the vulnerability in his kit? Well, we thought, you know, if we could lower his range, maybe he can have a, a little bit harder time dealing with certain champions. My problem is you didn't just lower the range, you cut it from right. like 550 to 500, which I think is pretty big. It's, it's severe, and we didn't take it lightly yeah. um, when we did it. I mean, like, we only did it because we were sure we wanted to amp up the strength on the kit as well. I think we're going pretty crazy with the mobility we're giving him this patch. It's going to be really intense. Yeah. Uh, and thematically and mechanically, right? Mm -hmm. It's really what we want to focus on to make this champion really distinct from all the other AD carries in the game, right? Uh, for example, using using a mage as as a sort of uh, analog, right? Mm -hmm. Lux, she's really she got really she's got really good damage and she's got really long range. And previously, she had really high movement speed as well, right? And when we look at what makes Lux Lux, is it that she's fast or is it that she has really long range and she Insane lasers burst. you across the screen, right? Pew, pew. And that's what we really want to do, sort of, we want to apply that to Lucian right. as well. Right, so like, we, we gave him a lot mobility. more mobility with yeah. the cooldown reduction on his E. I actually was testing it out with 40% cooldown reduction mm -hmm. and he is just dashing mm -hmm. all over the place yeah. and I feel like that's actually going to buff his late game power a lot. It's hard to tell. I mean, honestly, like, I think in certain matchups he will be better and in certain matchups he might be worse still because the range matters. Yeah. You know? One thing you have to question as well, like in the early game, um, if he's weaker in the laning phase because of the auto attack trading in lane, right. um, is that is he not going to translate into this mid late game beast that he could be um, because he just can't get out of the laning phase as yeah. well as some other AD carries. It's definitely something we're aiming for though because right now you pick him in the laning phase, you feel like you're going to get through it and, and, and so you're going to at least get through it. And then get Sometimes three you can just well. crush yeah. someone <laughs> exactly. and just like run away by with the you. blade. By so the I think with the new, the new setup, he will crush some lanes. 
he might get crushed in some lanes, you know, especially ones with like range disadvantages Caitlyn. and stuff. Yeah. Ca Caitlyn's <laughs> gonna be a, probably a nightmare matchup. Yeah. Already is, to be honest. That's, that's, true, that's true. That's true. Cool. So um, I do want to move on to Alistar before we run out of time. He's been a pretty low tier support pick in all levels of play, and I know that we're giving him uh, better mana mana costs and better damage reduction on his ultimate at earlier ranks. What are our goals for actually giving him competitive viability, and how do these changes support just, that? Just jungle Alistar coming back. <laughs> uh, well, that's that's, that's, complicated. that's complicated. That's complicated. That's um, complicated. So I mean, we we've always designed, originally intended uh, Alistar to be a support champion. You know, he brings a lot of cool mechanics and big play potential from that from that position. You know, we've seen even like Afro Moon and some Kore Korean pro players do Man some life. really cool stuff with him, um, and we really love that about him. More than a really crazy jungler. Yeah, and, that, and that's and that's actually the problem. Is I think. Um, you know, a couple of years ago, we, we went back and remade his passive and, and had this idea that maybe he could be a jungler. Mm. Um, and, and what ultimately fell out from that was we had to nerf things about him um, that were really abusive in the jungle that made him very weak yeah, in the support land. role. Yep. I mean, it, it, it's like uh, the mana costs are a large example of that. Um, he's someone who from the jungle uh, doesn't really feel that fair to play against. He comes out and knocks you away from your tower and then like CCs you for like, Way it's too like a long. Free Malphite mm -hmm. ultimate. Um, and you, <laughs> you have no time to react to it. But yeah. in lane, you know, you can use the brush. You can see his positioning. You can react to him. Um, and we think that's a, a one a thing you have place. to take in mind, though, that I think people, when they glance over the patch notes, won't really realize is yeah. the mana reduction in Q and W. Sure, you can cast it more often in lane. Mm -hmm. But if you look at the seventy percent damage reduction yeah. at level one on his ultimate, um, if you combine that with the mana cost on Q and W, essentially when you engage at level six you can get off another QW rotation just because you have an extra 20% damage mitigation that you otherwise wouldn't have. Mm -hmm. And that can be really strong when you're like going for fights or when you're escaping mm -hmm. ganks or things like that. And that's one of the things that people will overlook a lot. Okay, thanks guys. Uh, if you're looking for more information, definitely check out the patch notes. We'll be back in a couple of weeks, but until then, check out the link below and leave us your comments and questions.